and welcome to another episode of the Nindy Focus Podcast. My name is Roger. Along with me are my good friends, Phil. Good evening. And Mike. Salutations. And Jordan. Hiya. <laughs> <laughs> welcome. Welcome to the show. Uh, we, just like all every week, we're going to be talking about the games that we're playing. And then this week we do have a special, what is that game even called? What is the game that's switching on a budget? Birdman and the Freedom Force. Coco oh. Beware. <laughs> Ooh, there it is, our first wrestling reference. You did it, Mike. There we go. Revenge uh, of the Bird King. Yep. Revenge that's what it is. Revenge of the Bird King. It wasn't this. Yeah. So we'll talk about that um later on but before we get into that let's go around and tell people what we're currently playing and um we'll start with you phil what are you currently playing uh guys i've got some bad news oh no i fell in love this week oh so i don't know if i can do this show anymore because i'm just going to talk about one game (laughs) (laughs) and it's not broforce Nope, it's not Broforce. I didn't even touch that this week. So we'll start this off even a little bit lighter. I played a little bit of Golf With Your Friends again. Mm. Uh, it's a very long game. What do you think <laughs> of that you game? Can do it. It's, it doesn't suck, but it also doesn't really... Sometimes it's difficult to find where the hole is. Yeah. It's fun if you play with friends. The soundtrack is super repetitive. The yeah. courses are... They're fun enough and innovative, but sometimes, like I said, you just get a little bit misled and you end up shooting for a flag that's on the wrong hole repeatedly enough. And I've probably played three, four rounds at this juncture, usually with friends, and it's been fun. Uh, it's not my favorite game. Did you... I, um, can, I, can I ask one last question with that? Did you try any of the other... Uh, modes like the hockey mode or anything? No, I did not. I've just okay. straight up played the mini golf on that. Because the, the hockey mode is is pretty fun because they have your golf ball instead of the golf ball, it's a hockey puck. Okay. Um, which looks like I mean it's the same color as a golf ball, but it it's a hockey puck. And then instead of the holes, they have nets, and then they have a goalie, like a wooden goalie, going back and forth. It's kind of neat. Oh, that sounds kind of fun. Yeah. So I mean, I like the fact that they have different modes in the game and. There's some other modes, too, but that, that was the only one that I really played. Oh, I think there's a basketball one, too, which looked more difficult. But, huh. yeah, anyway, anyway, uh, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just wanted to see if you played any of those other... Oh, no, that's okay. I'll check I'll check one of those out at some point this week just to see how they how they feel. But talk about the other game you've been playing. Uh, so there's this little game called What the Golf that's been out for a little yes. bit of time, which is the least golfy golf game that I've ever played in my entire life. <laughs> It is wacky, it is chaotic, it slightly resembles mini golf, it is cute, it is adorable, it is highly addictive, and probably the most fun that I've had playing a video game in, like, just pure innocent fun, and I couldn't even tell you how many years. Damn. None of it makes any sense as you start to play it, but then as you start to catch on, like, as to what's going on, you're like, holy, this is super innovative, Mm -hmm. it's fun, it's rewarding, you can replay each of the holes three times to get, like, the crown achievement or thing, which unlocks more things for you to get to up your completion mode. Mm. There is, like, two holes of actual mini golf in the entire game, and the rest of it is just controlled, beautiful, cute chaos. I cannot stop playing this game, and I cannot rave enough about it. So you haven't beaten it yet or anything? You're still going? No, I'm still going. I I haven't. I touched it once since I was playing it a couple of days ago, just because work happened and real life happened, and uh, unfortunately, I haven't been able to get back into it. And I'm kind of also afraid because the first day that I picked it up, I think I played it for four hours nonstop. Oh wow! Okay, <laughs> so it's not a very short game then. No, not at no. all. Like, oh, interesting. I stuck, I stuck four hours into it, and I'm fifty, I'm fifty-five, fifty-six percent in. Oh wow. But even even after even if you were to beat the campaign mode, there's like daily challenges, so yep. you can you can oh, play nice. those too. And all the daily challenges are all based off of holes that are already in the game. Uh, it's nothing appears as it seems in the game, and you catch on to that right away when you're taking your tee shot and your club goes down to take the tee shot, and your golfer goes flying. Yeah. <laughs> and next thing you know, you're trying to get the golfer into the hole, and it just progresses from there. There's Mario themed levels. Yeah. There are desert levels. There's Wild West levels. There is levels that play like portal where you got to like hit portals into certain things and like line the portals up to get them in. Hmm. It is so innovative. I think it's twenty dollars and it is well worth every single penny dollar tax included of that twenty dollars. It's amazing. Wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So I've been playing this game too, and I second everything that Phil said there. This game is absolutely fantastic. There is also 
There's also a party mode too, but I think you can only play two players in the party mode. Yeah, and um, that's couch co-op only, and unfortunately, and I couldn't talk Rachel into playing that with me, so I can't tell you how that is. Yeah, I haven't played it couch co-op either, but I heard was that from you or somebody else that said that they may be bringing that online. Uh, I don't know. Hopefully, you read that somewhere online and it happens. Um, yeah. So that's actually that that is new because this game came out on ios yeah i don't know when that when it came out on ios though uh september i want to say september oh so it's not even that old i mean it's not that old it's kind of old but not that old yeah um yeah but this it's so it's so like phil was saying it's so wacky in in and just like the different things in the game like what what you have to do like sometimes there's a piano and it and, and sometimes it's like I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. And there's a piano, and then there's a flag up on a cloud, and then you have to, oh, yeah. and then there's cactuses on each side of you, and you have to move your piano to grab the cactus, the cacti as they stick to your piano, and then you flip the piano up in the air from the cacti, and then the cacti hit the flag. So it's so it's so innovative. <laughs> it's so it, weird. That level is basically Katamari Damacy, or however you want yes. to pronounce oh, that. Is what yeah. that you level know, is. When I saw the pre the trailers for it, that was one of the things I thought it was. I thought of immediately when I saw that. It's like something that, like like there was like a house and a whole bunch of stuff attached to it, just rolling yeah. down the the golf course. Yeah, 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 yeah. And even like just the the campaign world itself, you have to golf your way through to get to the different holes, and sometimes you have to do small things to unlock different sections of it. It's so innovative. It's absolutely amazing. I, yeah, yeah. And, and graphically, like it's not like it's the cute. most. It's cute, but it's not like the most graphically like intense game, right? It, no, it can't be. Like, what is that style? Is that the, is that considered that voxel style or whatever? Yeah, it that's kind what of, I was thinking. Yeah, yeah it kind of looks like uh, Overcooked and all that other stuff yes. that Team Seventeen has done, which I think yes. they produced on this as well. Yeah, uh, it's so good. That game is so good, and uh, and and there's just weird, wacky levels. Like there's a level where you're a chair and you have to beat a sheep, and the sheep is racing you to the <laughs> to the flag, and oh man. I spent so much. I finally beat that thing, but holy cow, that was really tough. It's just so, so innovative. And then they have like space levels where you're out in space, and then you shoot your golf ball, and it and it and the gravity of the planets suck it around. So it's like you do like the <laughs> orbit around planets. It's so weird. It's so cool. Like I said, weird. I... I mean, it in a nice way. Oh yeah. One of my personal favorites is when in the Wild West level. There's like three of the holes that you're playing as a female. And your goal is to spit spit into the spittoon. Like, you have to angle your spit just right, and there's different wind and stuff that'll mess with your spit, and you gotta hit the spittoon to in order to complete the hole. I was just like, this is... It's stupid, and it's great. Yeah. There's a there's an Angry Bird one, where you shoot the the bird, <laughs> and then they call it... like they, they even reference, like, Angry Bird in that, yep. that hole. So, uh, Angry Bird in, in Hole, or something like that. Yeah, or Angry Birdie, or something like that. Yeah, Angry Birdie, reference. yeah. It's it's so good. The game is so good. And if you if you if you haven't played it, you have to play it because just like what Phil said, I mean, that's pretty much what I've been playing this week too. It's so it, and I didn't realize that each hole had like three challenges. So you have just the normal one where you just have to hit it um or you just have to get to the to the to the hole and then there is the next level. Sometimes it's par, sometimes it's other things. And then there's the crown level which is totally different on that golf hole and you're like what the <laughs> what is going on here yeah it there's so there's so much to this game it's crazy and there's achievements um and when you do beat the game it tells you how fast you beat it um with how many strokes you you took for the game and there's some people out there that have beaten that game very quickly with very few strokes and i'm like i have no idea how these people are doing i'm at like 3300 right now or something <laughs> yeah, like yeah. that and yeah. i i don't think i've about a single shot i've taken yeah it's uh it's pretty amazing so uh yeah anything else <laughs> phil i don't think so so mike do you want to go next sure uh so i didn't play that so i it's you know not gonna be as exciting as uh as as, as the what the golf talk but i'll do what i can uh so i played you know obviously the game that we're gonna be talking about and I also played a uh, game I got for 99 cents on the eShop. I always got to start it with the amount that I got it for. It's the same thing whenever I when, when I get something and I bring it home and I show the wife. I'm like, before I even tell her what I got, I'm like, okay, <laughs> normally it's this much. Guess how much I got it for? I don't know. I just, I like the deals. But I got, anyways, <laughs> I'm trailing off. I got this for 99 cents. Uh, I played a game called Mother Russia Bleeds. Okay. And, 
Yes. Uh, and this one is a uh, side-scrolling beat-em-up, like a Streets of Rage type game. And it's incredibly violent, incredibly uh, bloody, uh, but it's a good game. It really, it really is um, a good game because... You can really mess these types of games up. Uh, for example, uh, the Turtles in Time remake. Mm, mm-hmm. I don't don't like that game, but <laughs> it's uh, it's it's you need to have like um, the hit boxes on the characters need to be just right, um, and it needs to do something to kind of set itself apart from uh, all the other beat 'em ups uh, to really get my you know to get my attention. So on this one. Um, you're, you know, it's, it's, you're in a dystopian society and you, they, uh, the authorities kidnap you to do experiments on you and you wake up in a lab and you got to fight your way out of the lab. That's essentially it. You could have four players, um, co-op on it. Wow. Online or local? Uh, I think it's just local. Okay. And the, um, see what is the one. So the thing that really sets itself apart is, so you've been experimented on. And in order to like regain your health, you have a syringe. And sometimes if you knock somebody down to the ground, they start convulsing. You can use your syringe to extra- extract this. Oh um, yeah, this, their, uh, the, whatever the, they, the, the, we'll just call it the ooze, the ooze out of them. <laughs> yeah. And then you can inject it into yourself to restore your health, or oh you God. can inject a bunch of it at once to put you into like super fast, super strong mode for a short period of time. Huh? Yeah. Uh, that sounds cool. It is. Oh, it's, oh, it's a lot of fun. Um, and it's, you know, it's got your typical, you know, punch kick. You can dash, uh, you can, you know, you can run, um, you can grab, you know, you can grab and throw people into other people. Um, you can ground, you could ground pound them. So like when they hit the ground, you just start smashing in their face until it's just, just a red smear on the ground. Um, it's uh it's it's the it's the the graphics look really good you know it's it's pixelated of course the only the only downside i had to it and this is only personal preference it has nothing to do with the controls of the game it seems to me it's like it's one of those games that's extreme for extreme's sake like when there's when characters are doing dialogue it's like every other word is you know is a curse word and you know it, it's it seems like a little overkill in terms mm. of the um and just how, like, like I said, they they want to make this extreme. It reminded me of I, I was so excited when I s- heard that the demo for uh, that new Contra game was on was was released, <laughs> and then I played it. I'm like, oh, this is awful. Not just the gameplay, but yeah. you know the the dialogue and everything. So uh, that's the only downside I had to it is just like you know it's it just seems like it's trying too hard to be edgy. Mm. Trying uh, too hard to be HBO. Oh, even worse than HBO. I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah. wow. Well, was it trying to be like tongue in cheek or is it like trying to be serious edgy? No, it was trying to be serious. Like uh, you could tell uh, it was trying to be, yeah, like cheap. Oh. But no, this was trying. But again, you know, like the gameplay out, you know, is, is what's awesome about it. So, right. Um, but yeah, so that's, yeah, Mother Russia Bleeds. You got it 99 cents. I'm not sure if it's still on sale or not, but uh, I would highly recommend picking it up. What's it normally cost? Do you know? Uh, I think it's normally like 15 or 20. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I just I just saw a little bit of gameplay of it. It looks pretty cool. Like graphically, it's I thought it was way better than I expected. Um, not that games, not that not that like graphics makes a game, but I was just surprised like how detailed it was. And there was like there was a scene where it was like some kind of chopper, and they were uh, like a like a meat chopper or something like that, and they were throwing people into it. And I was like, oh my god! <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a very violent game. Yeah, yeah, not not one for for the kids to be around when you're playing. Yeah, yeah, not not the game to play like, you know, hey, can we play, you know, Mario Odyssey? No, kids, let's play. <laughs> let's play yeah, Mother Russia, Russia please. please. Hey, there's four of us. Let's sit down and play Mother Russia please. Dad, what's he doing? <laughs> it's family Just... night. We're going to enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Now, now watch my back. <laughs> head up. Head up. <laughs> cool. Anything else, Mike? Nope, that was it. Okay. What about you, Jordan? For me, I delved back into a game that I've owned for a couple years now. I think it's or it's been out on Switch for almost two years. I think coming up soon, uh, which is Luminous Remastered. Yeah, nice. Uh, I don't know why I decided to play it again. I just started it, and then once I did, it's all I've been playing all week now. Mm-hmm. Every time I'm sitting down with my Switch, that's what I'm playing. Um, it's just so good. I don't know if you've played the remastered version or if you've played it on Switch or anything, but. Um, 
I'm very bad at it. I'm very, very bad at it. I feel like I've put a lot of hours in and then it shows you your completion every time you're like done, like the furthest you've ever gotten. I think the furthest I've ever gotten is like 25% or something still. Like it's so difficult, but it's so fun. Like I don't even care. It's just so fun. It's like amped up Tetris. Yep. Mm. Was that was that originally on the DS? I believe uh, so. Yeah. Is DS that, and the Vita, I want to say. Yeah. Is it a was it a, is it a game where you're like throwing blocks upwards or something? No, they drop like Tetris, but you have um, it, they're all squares, yeah. and then it's one of two colors on the square, and you can rotate them and drop them. And to get rid of blocks, um, unlike Tetris, you don't need a line or something, but you try to make a square of all the same colors on the board. Okay. Um, so the board is a lot longer, but you're only dealing with two colors at a time, which seems like it would be easy. It is not. <laughs> um, and then the way it works is that when you make um, a square on the board, there's like a, a passing line that goes from left to right over and over again. And that's when it will clear it away. So you have to like sometimes you have to wait for it to clear it away, but it also gives you time to do more of a combo. Um, but this one. Unlike Tetris, which does have really good music, this game is definitely about the music. It's yeah. like very trancey. It's very upbeat. Um, and the colors change as you're playing levels. So it'll be like, it always starts on the same color. So it's like white and orange. And then it goes to like a white and red with like a different shader on it. And there's just like all these different colors. So it's like keeping it interesting. And there's always a new song with each new like color too. So you get all these like what they call skins. And the goal is to get to 100%. I think there's like 40 total skins. I think the most I've seen is like, yeah, 10. That's as far as I've got. I, don't, I haven't even unlocked some of the modes yet. And I don't even know how, because I think I'm just that bad. But they're like, you're not ready for these modes yet. I'm just waiting for them. Don't know how to get them. I put there. a lot of time into the original, and that game is super addictive, and the music is really catchy. It just helps you get in that groove and that zone of playing. It. Yeah. It's such a good game. Time goes by so fast, too, because you'll like... Sometimes you'll have a really bad run and maybe it'll only be like a five minute game, but other times you'll get like a 19 minute, you know, round and you're like, oh, wow, that was cool. And then you just start it all over again and back to the beginning. And because it doesn't, I think there are some songs where it does get a little quicker and you don't have as much time, but it's not like Tetris where the further you go on, it's just like crazy fast, crazy fast, crazy fast. Like maybe it gets like that near the end, probably actually, but at least like I've had some that have been 20 minutes long and they've been completely manageable. I'm just messing up my board, you know? Yeah. I, I have that game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I haven't touched it in forever. Like I probably haven't even played it for over a year now. And then I was just looking through all my games. I didn't know what I was in the mood for and just pulled out this one. And then I've probably put a few hours in this week just on this. Yeah. You know, I, I wanted to like that game. I it's okay. I like it. Um, I, it's weird though, because I think, I think if you are somebody, maybe this is just me, but I feel like if you play a lot of like Tetris or a lot of, uh, Dr. Mario or those types of games, like, and then you try to explain this game to somebody else. It's it's different because you do have to wait for that line to show up and then it clears up the things. Yeah. So there's some strategy behind it that's different. I mean, there's strategy to Tetris and, and Dr. Mario, don't get me wrong, but it's a different strategy, right? So, yeah. Um, I just remember sitting down with, with my wife and we were sitting at it. I was trying to explain it to her and I didn't quite understand it. And she's like, I, I don't get this. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I don't either. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like an advanced version of Tetris. Yeah. But with yeah. really, really good music. Yeah, the music is fantastic. Like, that's one thing I, I would say, wow, it's so good. But it is so, it is really hard. It is really, really hard. Yeah. And there uh, is, I know there are leaderboards. There are yeah. two-player modes, um, co-op, um, or not co-op, but versus each other. Uh, so there are different modes and stuff like that. But I haven't tried any of those yet. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I have to give it another shot again. Um, because I I. I did enjoy it. It was just, it was really hard, but it is addictive. I will say that, um, you know, sit down and you're like, oh, and just play a quick game. And then like five games later, you're like, oh, that was like an hour. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What yeah. I would I say keep it? going. Like, I feel like I was the same way, which is why I dropped it in the first place and didn't touch it for so long. Yeah. And then getting back into it again, I feel like once you kind of start getting the flow or, you know, it's like when you start playing Tetris and you just get better. So you start seeing lines before it's going to happen and you're just dropping stuff really fast, even though you don't have to. Like once you start seeing like where you need to put stuff before you, you know, it just, it starts feeling really good. Yeah. No, I agreed. Cool. Uh, anything else? Nope. Say two. Okay. Uh, for myself, um, I've been playing a lot of What the Gulf, uh, like, like Phil has. 
And I, you know, I don't have anything else to say. It's just a great game. Um, check it out. I mean, I think it's on sale right now. Well, it was when it what? launched. Is it? It was. It, it had a, it had a launch sale price. Oh yeah, I, I think I paid like fifteen the, for it or something like uh, that instead of twenty. Yep. Right. Yep. So, and I think they came out. Yeah, what we talked about last week. It came out on the twenty first. Uh, so we just talked about how the fact that I bought it, I pre-ordered it, but I didn't play it yet, but now I got a chance to. Yeah, it's really good. Other than that, I've been continuing playing Super Mega Ball, Super, Super Mega Ball, Super Mega Baseball 3. Nice. Uh, that game is really good. Like, I just keep finding more and more things in the game that I just absolutely love. They'll have, when you know, after you play your game and you let the computer play, you know, their games, simulate through their games, they'll have, like, news on the right-hand side that you can scroll through, and it'll show, like, players that got traded, or... And it's just, like, silly things, like, such and such pitcher really pissed off the their coach, so they fired him, and they hired this person instead. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is hilarious. Uh, I spent some money on, on some of my players. Uh, in fact, Jordan, your character, I spent some... some um, I bought some like Gatorade, but I forget what the name is called. What flavor? I, I don't know. I don't know. It's like I don't. It didn't show. It didn't say what flavor. But you, your stats went up, and it's interesting nice. because what happens? It it tells you what's going to happen. Like here, here's the chance of it. Uh, you have a percent of a chance for the stats to go up, but then here's uh, there's bonus stats that could happen as well, and that's random, and it spins like a coin, uh, and then it lands on a certain thing, and if it, it lands on the heads. Then you get more. Well, I shouldn't say heads, but if it lands on like, the star or the check, if it gets a star, you get more bonus points. The check just means okay, yeah, you got something out of it. So it's cool. I, Interesting. I, yeah, it's so so deep. And I, the other thing that I find really funny in that game is um, the uh, the advertisements. Uh, fantastic. There's one that says uh, America, America, American. It's American, American Motors. If you love this country, you'll buy American. And I'm like, oh my god, it's, <laughs> it's spelled M U K I E N or something, American. <laughs> uh, M U R K I N. It's hilarious. It's just so funny. Um, but yeah, it's so good. It's, it's such a good game, and just the the amount of stats that they have in the game too. It's fantastic. The game, they just did a really good job with it. So um, yeah, I feel like the I, more I hear you talk about it, the more I actually want to go out and buy it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, and I think I think a lot of people saw it and said, "Oh, it looks the same as Super Mega Baseball 2." Mm. And the look, I will say, looks the same. Uh, and they they probably could have done a little bit more polish on the fielding. Um that still doesn't play as well. Um but just the fact that they have the franchise mode and you can like customize all of that, it's so good. So good. So, yeah, those are the games that I've been playing. Um, let's move on then to our switching on a budget game. So, uh, who picked this game out? Was this you, Phil? This was me. All right. What What is this game? <clears throat> um, I can't, you know, I don't remember the name of it. We just covered this. <laughs> bird, like revenge. revenge. Revenge of the Bird uh, King? Revenge of the Bird King. Revenge of the Bird King. Yeah, that makes sense because I guess your dad was the bird king right? and now he's dead and you're kind of yeah. one of the last of your people and you have to getting revenge getting revenge, yeah, getting yeah. revenge. and you are a bird and you are a bird <laughs> the gun yeah. i would like to hear the pitch for this game right, yeah. so they're, they're the bird okay <laughs> we're gonna come up with the rogue guns really cheesy names for everything and you're gonna fight your way through them okay yeah. cool yeah. All right. So my avenging my dad. All right. Yep. We can do that. Yeah. Sure. One classic. <laughs> hey, if it's not broken. Yep. Yep. Um, so one thing we should say too that this game because we you know we always pick the switching on the budget game and this one it has to be under ten dollars. This was the cheapest game we've picked so far. <laughs> I don't think it can get any cheaper except for free. Uh, this was a penny. Yep. It's normally only five dollars too. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. It was. It's okay. not a super expensive game and. I suppose we should talk about the game before we start to really get into anything. Uh, I've got a feeling you played a little bit more than of it than I did, Jordan. I've completed like two zones. Okay, uh, you may have done more than me, actually. I tried to get through two zones. I just kept getting stuck. Huh. All right. So we're in about the same spot. Did you go through that first initial town? Um. Yes. All right. So it's essentially a platformer, an action platformer, where you've got to you plant guns. You can pick up your gun and shoot things to get revenge. <laughs> um, 
it plays really well, looks really well. The soundtrack is not annoying. It's nice, catchy, 8-bit, or yeah, I think that'd be like 8-bit style music that just kind of you groove to. And I I haven't experienced a single hiccup with the game with the exception of, well, Jordan, you had a hiccup. Uh, I did. Just from time to time, I suck is what it really comes down to. The (laughs) the first boss fight was a good boss fight once I figured out what to do. And that was just because I forgot that I could play sentry turrets is what it all boiled down to. That's how I beat it. And once I got those down, it was just it was all smooth sailing. Then it was just a matter of dodging. Uh, You're more liable to die via falling off of something or missing a jump than getting killed by something is what I've discovered so far. Yeah. Yeah. But it's uh, I like it. I was also very happy in the boss fight that when you died, you didn't have to go back to the beginning oh, yeah. of the level yeah, and get so through it again. About yes. that. I was like, oh, is this going to be like those games where it's like, oh, you died to the boss, do it all over again. Nope. At least they just drop you right back in. That made me so happy. Yeah. And they literally drop you right back in. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> you do get dropped. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like dead back. Whoa. Hey, all right. Yeah. So I did like that a lot. And it does, like you said, it does control very well. Like it's the controls are very tight for a platformer. Mm hmm. And especially for being one cent or five dollar platform yeah. control super tight. Like I've yeah. played a lot more floaty games that I've spent five times that amount on. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I was surprised like how much how, like how deep actually the mechanics were in this game too. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you have the swords. So you, your character has a sword that he can slash things with, and then, like you said, he plants these seeds that grows guns. I don't. I didn't quite understand that, but okay. Uh, and then Eagles, man, that's what they. Oh do. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. And uh, and then and then so you have a revolver, or you have uh, you know you can set up those turrets, like you said, if you hold down the button and you hold it down and you throw out your seed. But then there's like other things that you can get in the game too. So you pick up money as you play through the game, like coins, and then you can buy mm-hmm. additional things too. So you guys want to talk seeds. about that? Yeah, more seeds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, for different types of guns, and that's it. There's so there's so much cool stuff in it. And to me, like what I really liked about it is that there was so much stuff in there that I haven't seen in other games. Like I love the idea of just growing a plant that has a gun on yeah. it. Yeah, it's yeah. just so it's just so quirky. I I love it. And then you know having to buy more seeds. Like uh, there is the after taking out the first boss, you get a you can you get a spread gun. Yep. Yeah. And. Uh, you know, and I'm like, and I'm like, okay, I'll buy two seeds. I'm like, no. And then after I died on that level, I'm like, all right, I need to buy like 30 seeds <laughs> yeah. for this spread gun. Um, and and the uh, the mechanics, are, like you said, it, it controls so well. I actually I felt guilty paying a penny for this. Yeah. Mm. Like because it was so good, and and it and you could tell the inspirations and the love letters are there. I saw. Uh, Mega Man, definitely, and the other one I saw big was Shovel Knight. It seems like that they really like Shovel Knight, yeah, based on this game. Which that's a good one to emulate because that is a very good platformer too. Also, a small sprinkle of Zelda Two or Legend of Zelda Two on the yeah, Nintendo, yes. the way that the overhead weird. map plays out. Like, and yes. nobody ever throws back to Zelda Two. Everybody tries to pretend that game doesn't exist, and this one was just like, hey, we're gonna give you that same overhead style map that Zelda Two did with the encounters and the enemies that show up and pop up, and you have to fight them. I, I love that. that was pretty Zelda slick. Too. I I love that. I don't care. I love that. I, yeah, I, was I so like seeing it in this game. It made me happy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, yeah, I was surprised to see that in this game. Like, I thought that was really cool that they had that overworld and you, you know, walk to the next level. I thought that was really, really unique. Yep. Then it's, and the, you know what else? Another thing I loved is I love the writing. Yeah. Yeah, it's super it was, cheesy. Oh, it's so, I love the character names that they had for the bosses. I yeah. don't <laughs> remember any of them off top, except for like Buff Low or something like that was yeah, the Buffalo, Buffalo guy. He's all, yeah, he's, he's just a buff. jacked up. Buffalo. Yeah. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> He's a buff buffalo. Yeah. Yep. There's two coins for you this week, yeah. Phil. Two. <laughs> Wait a minute. And I, I got took the lead. <laughs> and I gotta say, any game that quotes that does such an obscure quote from Always Sunny in Philadelphia is is great. Uh, is perfect in mind. Yeah. There's there's a part in the game where you talk to a spirit and the spirit says and I actually I took a screenshot of this so I'm going to read this verbatim. Say uh cats can flatten themselves and go right through the seams in a wall. Yeah. <laughs> I learned this in Philadelphia. This yeah. is a fact. And I, if you ever saw that episode, yeah. always sunny. Yeah. Ah, cat in the wall. I you know, you're speaking my language. Yeah. yeah. That's it's just like it's oh man is it it's just such a good i really really like this game i'm so glad that you picked this because here's the thing i saw this game on sale on the eShop like every other week yeah and the fact that i saw it on sale for so cheap every other week on the eShop led me to believe that it was a trash game yep me too me too well especially a penny right because i mean you're right i don't think i've ever seen this game full price Mm -hmm. ever uh and i think it released 
I think it's fairly new. I don't want to say it's. I think like it originally. I, th- I saw it originally came out in like 2017 or something like oh, that. Oh, did okay, but not on the Switch. On something not else. On the Switch. Okay, okay, yeah, but probably yeah. I, I was surprised how how polished it was too for for being a penny. And the other thing I wanted to ask you guys is, and I don't think this is a spoiler because you're going to learn this like within before you even get to the first boss. I mean, do you, are you the bad guy in this game? It almost kind of felt like it. Yeah. Because those those, you know, the bosses that are showing up, they're they're like we're here to fight for justice and blah 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 and he's like, "Yeah, but my dad's grave's there, so get the hell out of here." Like I, <laughs> yeah. don't, I don't really care what you're here for. Get out of here cuz you're, you know, you're 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 trashing on my my dad's grave. And they're like, "Are you are, are you challenging us?" And he's like, "Yeah." <laughs> it's like, "Yeah, sure, why not?" Yeah, why I not? Am the Bird King. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I want more games like this where I'm the bad guy like that, and the bosses are yeah. technically the good guy. Like, that's yeah. cool. That is really cool. Yeah, I thought that was kind of a cool twist. Like, I was like, oh, cool. Like, when I first when I first got there, I was like, uh-oh. Uh-oh, I have to take all these guys on. And yeah. then they're like, hey, we're here to save the world. And I'm like, yay, we're going to join them. And he's like, yeah, get out of here. This is my land. <laughs> <laughs> Get off my lawn. Because they all read about it in a book or whatever to meet up yeah, at a certain time yeah. at a certain date. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Good stuff. Exactly. Exactly. And they, and they even like, and you're here. Like, you're here. We didn't think there's any more eagles or bird people alive. And he's like, yeah, yeah. I have to get, get out of here. Like, like, wait, what? Like, <laughs> I thought that was awesome. That was so clever. Uh, I love that. I love that. And yeah, I'm, I'm not sure you are a good guy in this game. I think that you're just, you know, kind of a... Well, I mean, guys, a bird is king. yeah, bird king, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the one downfall that I had with it is it is kind of tough. Oh yeah, yeah. it's, it's not easy. Challenge. It's it's and it's not punishing, but it's definitely challenging. No. Yeah, and it is one of those games where I did struggle after the first boss to figure out where I should go next, yeah. um, and then I feel like I did go to a lot of places where it was like, okay, I don't think I actually have an ability to, to get through here, or like I wasn't sure whether I could get through or not. Um, maybe that was player error, but also, yeah, it still gave me that feeling where I just wasn't sure. Yeah. No, you're, you're absolutely right. There were some spots that you can't get through unless you have a certain weapon. Um, okay. There was like, right when you, right when you finished that first level, I don't know if you looked into it, but when you go into the forest, there's an area where a little boy just says, I just want to jump into a pile of leaves. So if you use your, your spread gun, which is like your leaf gun uh-huh. and shoot it and shoot it at the pit. Huh. then it will create a pile of leaves and he'll jump into the pit. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah, that is really cool. And then you'll get a whole bunch of coins for it. Huh. So yeah, so it's 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 like Shovel Knight in that way. There's only there's certain areas you can't access hmm. unless you have uh, a specific weapon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and graphically, I mean, right, it's it's like an 8-bit game. It's not it's not going to blow you away. And we and when I first saw people were used to. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Yeah, but when I first saw it too, I think I was in the same camp as everybody else. Was like, "What is this? Like, is this going to be trash?" And then you start playing, and you're like, "This is actually pretty polished for for what what I'm having here." So yeah, I, I was impressed. Phil, you did yourself well. I yeah. made up, I made up for Roar. Nice work, and for yeah. for a single penny, that's like yeah. twice the points. That's like, right. <laughs> so I made up for Roar, is what we're saying. You made up yes. Roar and you the made other... Up. What was the other and game? And then some. I was, was not responsible game? for the other game. Just Roar. Oh, no, you're right. I was responsible for all yeah. of that. Yeah, <laughs> you're trying to pass the blame. <laughs> <laughs> you can't put all of our bad decisions on me, Roger, just because you host the show. <laughs> <laughs> you're like you an eagle have... king. <laughs> <laughs> Get off my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I already quit twice last week. No, it was a good game. So, good pick. Uh, and Mike, you are up next, right? I am. What did you have a pick already? I am. Oh no, I, I do. Okay, <laughs> I'm prepared. Oh, ooh. so That's, yeah, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got that was a, that was a warning shot at all of us, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm prepared, guys. <laughs> um, so I the game I picked. So what we're doing now is we're uh, at at the end of the episode. We give whoever's turn it is to do the switching on a budget game. Um, announces that game so that those of you listening who want to give it a try. We'll have that opportunity while it's still on sale. Tom, um, looking at you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so when I was looking for a game, I tried to find one that the sale was going on a bit long. So this one, the game is on sale until June 11th. So you've got some time. Um, it's normally 
but it's on sale right now for three dollars and thirty nine cents. Nice. Uh, this game is a Metroidvania style game, um, and you know, as we all know, there's a there's a complete lack of those on the Switch eShop. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say that narrowed it down for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, in this game, uh, you play as a fish whose bowl is attached to a robot's body. Oh, I know what game this is. Yep, yep, yeah. Yep. And you have a sword, and you're you know it, just going wacky adventures. So the name of the game is called Feudal Alloy. Yeah, yeah, F E U D A L, Feudal Alloy. So um, I I, lo- I saw a trailer for this on one of the Nindy directs a long time ago, and I was really interested in it. I just didn't know if I was interested enough to pay seventeen dollars for it, but I sure enough was interested to pay three dollars and thirty nine cents for it. <laughs> So um, I was ready to pay seventeen for fish and a bull with a sword attached to a <laughs> robot leg. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so that's my pick. Um, we'll give this one a try, and we'll talk about it next week. Feudal awesome. alloy, All cool. Right, purchased, yeah, nice. I'm excited. I, I, you know, that was one game that I will say uh, when it when it came out, I was really intrigued, and then it kind of fell off my radar. So I'm glad you picked that game, Mike. Yeah, well, it's either that or flashback, and I, mm. I figured. Yeah, see, that's... <laughs> I would have taken next week off. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mike. That no, I'm I thought sorry. it was out of this world that you hate. You hate both of them. Um, I hate out of this world more than I hate flashback. I was waiting for Roger to ask him, aren't they the same game? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I have flashback. I did not buy out of this world, but I do have flashback. Uh, on like the PlayStation Four, I think, or something, or PlayStation Three. One one of those. Uh. Sony, one of those Sony platforms. I don't know which one. Uh, which I, Mike, you tell me it's fantastic. I played a little bit and I was like, I don't get it. Whatever. I didn't get, I just, I don't get the appeal, but whatever. It's not me. It's not for me. It's not for me. And that's fine. Right? That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> nice. All right. Well, let's uh, go around the, the room and tell people how they can get a hold of us. We'll start with you, Phil. How can people get a hold of you? I am on Twitter at BNow23. Nice. And Mike, how can people get a hold of you? You can find me on Twitter at TC Throwers and at Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash TC Throwers. Nice. And Jordan, how can people get a hold of you? On Twitter at Cryptic Jordan and on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Phenomalol. Phenomalol. Nice. And uh, and you're streaming quite a bit. so uh, I am. I have nothing else to do with my life right now, so I'm just on there <laughs> yeah. streaming for nobody. So please come watch. <laughs> uh and and <laughs> i watch what are you talking about yeah, uh me too so <laughs> that's true you guys don't count no oh, well i know you wow okay yeah well kind of anyway uh if you want to follow gamerheads uh the the network you can do that we're on the gamerheads network podcast network that's at gamerheads uh, podcast.com you can find shows like the tc throwers there you can find this show you can find bells and roses you can even find the real dudes podcast so that's all there uh if you want to follow us up on twitter you can follow us at gamerheads pc or you can follow this show specifically and that's at focus nindy and last thing i'll mention here uh, before we say our goodbyes if you like the show and you want to help us grow the audience, uh, leave us a a review on iTunes or Google Play, wherever you listen to the show. We would really appreciate it, and we'll even read those reviews on the air. So there's that. That's my pitch. All right, Phil, thank you so much for joining us this week. Thank you. And Mike, thank you so much for joining us. Always a pleasure. And Jordan, thank you so much for joining us. Always. And listeners, thank you so much for listening to us, giving us a bit of your time and sharing your day with, with us. So we appreciate that until next week. Stay safe <laughs> and play. <laughs> oh, God. It's in the notes, really? Roger. It's in the notes. No, I know. I was laughing at, uh, at George. <laughs> stay games and play next week. Stay safe and play games. Take care. Bye everybody. So long. Bye.